Hi, today I'd like to talk a little bit about the product rule and the quotient rule. Um, so we're in section 3.3 and I'm going to do two problems for you, problem 13 and problem 14 from page 124. Okay, the product rule and the quotient rule are things we need to be careful of because unlike when we're adding or subtracting terms where you can take the derivative of each individual term separately, when you're doing the product rule or the quotient rule, you can't do that. All right, so in other words, in this case where we have some factor times some factor, I am not allowed to take the derivative of this factor and multiply it by the derivative of this factor. All right, instead, if I want to take the derivative of this whole function y, I need to take the derivative of this factor times this factor and then add that to the derivative of this factor times this factor. All right, so in other words, let's say we had some function y, which was some factor u times some factor v. All right, so in this case, this is u and this is v. All right, if I want to take the derivative of this, I cannot, uh, let's use better notation, if I want to find y prime, the derivative of y, I cannot do this, u prime times v, v prime. That does not work. All right, we need to be very careful about this. There's a proof in the book, uh, which we probably have already gone over in class, or if we haven't, we will talk about that soon. Um, but in order to find y prime, instead we need to use the product rule, rule which looks like this, u times v prime plus v times u prime. All right, so in other words, the first factor times the derivative of the second factor plus the second factor times the derivative of the first factor. All right, so let's put it to work here. Um, so if I want to find the derivative of the function y, y prime, I'm going to take the first factor, x plus 1, times the derivative of the second factor. All right, now we can use the product rule here. We no longer have to use that x plus h stuff, thank God. We now know that the derivative of x squared, this exponent goes out front, so it's going to become 2x, and then the exponent decreases 1, so it goes from 2 to 1. So I don't really have to write that. And then also the derivative of 1 is going to be 0, so I'm not going to write that. All right, so I got this part done. Now let's do the second part. So the second factor, x squared plus 1, times the derivative of the first factor. All right, the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of 1 is 0. All right, so we've just taken a derivative, but let's continue this problem and simplify. So y prime equals 2x squared plus 2x plus x squared plus 1. And let's combine like terms. y prime equals 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. All right, so we have taken a derivative of this function y using the product rule, and this is what we got. And I'm pretty sure that is the correct answer. We can check it in the back of the book. Um, but let's check it another way. For problem number 13, they ask us to, instead of using the product rule, well, they ask us first to do that, but then in addition to that, instead of using the product rule, multiply all this out and then take a derivative using the power rule. All right, so let's do that. So I'm not going to take a derivative first. Instead, I'm going to just FOIL this. Uh, first times first, x cubed, outer times outer, x, inner times inner, x squared, and last times last, 1 times 1 is 1. All right, so I'm just going to put this in decreasing order of degree because that's how I feel more comfortable. All right, and now we have all terms, you know, all addition. There's no multiplication here. Okay, so now I can just use the power rule. So let's take a derivative, the derivative of x cubed. All right, the 3 goes in front, so 3x, and we got to subtract 1 from the exponent, 3x squared. The 2 goes in front, subtract 1 from the exponent, x to the first. Um, the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So look at that. We got our derivative, same as what we got using the product rule. Okay, so the proof that they give for the product rule, which is on page 119, is very good. But sometimes it's more effective to just do it with a problem and see, yes, the product rule works. We got the same derivative as we did without using the product rule. All right, so that's pretty convincing. Let's do the same sort of activity with the quotient rule. Okay, so the quotient rule, once again, we can't take the derivative of the top and then divide it by the derivative of the bottom. Instead, if we want to take the derivative of this whole function, we need to use this. So let's say we have some u over v. All right, so the top is u, the bottom is v. If I want to take the derivative, y prime, uh, I will do bottoms up. So the bottom comes up, v times u prime. So the bottom times the derivative of the top 
minus, careful, subtraction here. The product rule had addition, the quotient rule had subtraction. I right, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. And then that's all over the bottom squared. Okay, so let's give this a shot. So let's find, for this function right here, let's find y prime. All right, so bottom's up. So the bottom comes up times the derivative of the top, which is 2x, minus the top, x squared plus 3, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 1, all over the bottom squared. All right, so looking good. We've taken our derivative, but let's simplify. Um, so 2x squared minus x squared, being careful to distribute the negative sign, minus 3, all over x squared. Let's keep simplifying. Uh, so 2x squared minus x squared is 1x squared, x squared minus 3 over x squared. And let's go even one step further. x squared divided by x squared is 1, and 3 divided by x squared is 3 over x squared. Nothing really you can do there. All right, so there is what y prime is. We found it using the quotient rule. All right, now the book asks us to kind of check that this actually works by instead of using the quotient rule, let's simplify this first and then find the derivative. All right, so function y, let's actually do this division. x squared divided by x is x, and 3 divided by x, well, that's 3 over x. All right, and here's a nice little trick that works. Here we have division. So we could use the quotient rule, but when the denominator is so simple like this, it's actually going to be more helpful to rewrite this problem as 3x to the negative first. Right, that's what a negative exponent means, is it's a way of rewriting instead of dividing by x, we can multiply by x to the negative first. And this is going to be extremely helpful, why do you think? Because it allows us to use the power rule as opposed to the quotient rule. The power rule is super easy. The quotient rule, while not very hard, takes some time. Okay, so this is going to let us do the power rule. Okay, so let's take a derivative. Derivative of x is 1. And here we have an exponent, so that goes out front. So negative 3 is going to be our new coefficient. And then we subtract 1 from the denominator, negative 2. And if we rewrite this, 1 stays as 1, minus 3. And then x to the negative second means we have an x squared on bottom. Check it out. Same as what we got before, right? So we took the derivative of this function using the quotient rule. And we got 1 minus 3 over x squared. And we took the derivative after we simplified. And we got 1 minus 3x squared. All right, so it seems the quotient rule works too. Now, this isn't a proof, but this is pretty good evidence. If you want a proof, uh, we'll probably talk about it in class. But if you're interested, go to page 120. They have a proof for the quotient rule there. OK, thanks a lot. If you have any questions, please write them down and bring them to class.